The next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. We got to work on our timing together, Jay. Yes, sir, baby. All the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. Zay France in the building. My guy, how are you today? Chilling, bro. Welcome to the show. Appreciate y'all having me. Great shit today. So that's an unreleased song. Uh, maybe by the time people see this, it's out. But what's that song called? Give It Up. Give It Up. Tight. When you plan on dropping that song? After I finish this tour I'm on right now. Okay. Yeah, because we just, because tour life. Yeah. How's it been going? It's fun. It's fun? It's fun. I ain't going to lie. I'm tired, but... <laughs> what I signed up for so that's what I'm everybody always says yeah I'm figuring it out when it's I had funny. um shout out my Memphis girls when I had gloss up and uh Samaroni here um they were here on tour with glow or with Glorilla and I was like how's tour life and they're always like tired but this is what I asked for but what's been the best and worst part best part is just the energy I get from the crowd bro. okay like this is my first real tour so it's like my first time going to all of these cities that I've been to it's my first time going but just to know people there, know my shit, and they singing to it, like, it's fire. Mm. Uh, and then the worst part, ain't no worst part yet. I'm lit. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, I'm not. Well, what, what number show are we on right now? It's gonna be four tomorrow. Okay, four out of? Nine. Oh, yeah, by, like, seven. Yeah, it's probably gonna be something. That I I'm give like, you, like, man. by seven. Seven, you're gonna be like, ugh. Yeah. You're gonna start doing the, okay, one more show. Yeah, fact. Okay, one more show. <laughs> I like it, though. I ain't gonna lie. I like it. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're having fun, though. You got the van or like you got like the the bus like what you we got the truck in the U-Haul right now we thugging Ooh, it yeah we thugging it, it. <laughs> we thugging it. I, right like <laughs> we I like that I like that yeah how's the how's the you wait which one which one are you in no like, it's like a U-Haul attachment I'm like wait what the oh it's a U-Haul attachment <laughs> yeah to so the... we got the like suburban and then we got the little you know what I mean we got the little the attachment. little thing in the back yeah the vibe ain't for everybody it dig it's definitely not I like I like that uh. Well, one, the tour name is incredible, obviously, right? And then just kind of like the 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 whole having the U-Haul, like it's kind of cool because I feel like sometimes we don't always talk about this with artists about how their first like you know like tours like this or early tours like everybody always sees like the big buses and the but they don't see like the thugging it out part. And it's with the funny U-Hauls. because I <laughs> I'm telling my manager before we did this, I'm like, bro, I need a bus at least for the first three shows. Like I'm not going unless I got a bus for at least the first three. Like we not I need to have footage. Nigga, I am in a U-Haul thugging it. But I'm glad, though. I, I like the little process. You feel me? I want to be able to go back and, like, nigga, my first one, we had the little U-Haul hitch in the back. Yeah. You feel me? Like, and I ain't with the faking it till you make it. We're going we gonna to see what's really happening right now mm-hmm. so you can appreciate the next level even more. Yeah, I remember, like, early days of, like, Kaylani when I was, like, super, like, following her, like, in 2014, 15-ish. And I would see, like, the videos that her manager would post in... They weren't in, in like sprinters, but like it was kind of like a bus to some extent. But wasn't like not like the buses that you and I are talking about. It's like right. the bus with like the the five or six rows of like two seats, yeah. and like everybody like they're all like huddled in there, like half asleep, masks Thanks. on. It's like that's what really thugging it out on the road is like. And I like seeing shit like that because. You know, like you said, like people like to fake it until they make it. Like right. you might, like artists might be like, "All right, oh, that's a nice bus. Let me go take a picture from the bus." And you know, you got a U-Haul too. You got a U-Haul too, my boy. <laughs> but I think people, I think fans automatically assume that you have a bus, though. You said I, they do. I feel like they would. They definitely did until they seen a U-Haul. I posted like <laughs> what I told you. What I <laughs> what I'm going through, they are gonna see. I'm not about to fake it. It's no point. So they probably did before they seen the footage. Of me in front of a U-Haul, in front of a sign that says Zay France on it. This so, is kind of tight, though. You know what I'm saying? Dude, like, have you had, like, experiences where, like, the fans have, like, come, like, as you're trying to get back to the U-Haul, have they, like, run up to you and they're like, that's how you traveling? Nah. Because everybody, anybody that knows Zay France knows, like, like I said, what you see is what you get. Like, mm-hmm. nobody thinks that it's more than what it is unless they think, unless they come, they think that and then they see for mm-hmm. themselves. So once they see for themselves, they're not even gonna feel like the need to come up to me like, "Yo, so you in it?" I didn't say I was in that. So why would you feel a way that I'm in this? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So a public perception of how people exactly. think an artist has to be. Yeah, we're not following that. I like that because people will normally automatically be like, "Oh yeah, like he doing tours, he doing shows. That boy Rich, he got the big bus." Oh no, we thugging it right now. We still on the grind, but it's on the way though. Best believe that's on the way. I like that. How long you been thugging it for? This is my first tour, so I've been thugging it with music for damn yeah, that's ten what I meant, years, yeah. trying to get to where I'm at right now. For you said how many years? Ten years. Like I've been serious for a while. Like 
before high school. Like I've been dead serious with making music, but it's it's starting to click right now. It's starting to make sense. When do you feel like you hit your ten thousand hours? You know how they always say like you got to get ten thousand hours to master something. When do you think you? Listen. When in that time period do you think you hit that ten k? Years ago. Years, years ago. ago. Literally, like at least five, six years ago, I hit my ten thousand. Bro, I need twenty thousand more. Do you think it takes more than ten k to to say yeah, your master? Yeah, ten thousand is not a lot if you really think about it. Like, I mean, it is. It's twenty four hours in a day. That's a lot. But if you really, really love something, I feel like math. ten. Yeah, let's do the math real quick. Real <laughs> I was shit. like, let me see how much like real, real uh, uh, calculator. What are we we saying twenty four hours in a day. Ten thousand divided by twenty. Twenty. Yeah, thanks. I was gonna do ten thousand times twenty four. I don't know why I divided by twenty four. Four hundred sixteen days. That's slight. That's slight, bro. It's like I could do that shit in like three. years. I recorded for uh, what? <laughs> I've recorded every day for years, so I've been over that. Like I've been over the ten thousand. So like five, six years ago. So you were born in North Carolina, but then you lived in Connecticut, obviously, for the majority of your life, correct? Mm -hmm. um, how old were you when you moved? 12. 12, okay. 11, about to turn 12. Okay. Was that around the time? Because you mentioned like even like before like high school, you were starting to do music. Was, this, was that around like those developmental years for you? So I grew up in church, so I've been singing my whole life. But then once I moved to Connecticut, I ended up meeting a few of my friends that was way more advanced in music than me, especially R and B. Okay. Like one of my boys, Mizzy. And we clicked real like as soon as I met him, I knew he was one of them ones and he knew I was one of them ones. And we just knew that no matter what, we was gonna like work together to get to where we and that's still my brother to this day. Mm. But that's really what like once I moved there, that's what really like made me get serious about R and B for real. I was just singing. I didn't know what I was trying to do with mm -hmm. singing. I knew I wasn't really trying to do gospel, but I didn't know what I was trying to do. Why do you feel like gospel wasn't just your past? Just because I'm not living gospel life right now. Like I, maybe in the future for sure, mm. but I'm not gonna be sending and singing gospel, that's crazy. <laughs> which is a lot of people doing. But I'm not. I can't do that. You said a lot of people are doing oh, that. Yeah, for sure. But I feel like it's funny because I feel like you know when they say like oh like kids who are raised in like the church or who go to like Catholic schools growing up it's always like they turn out and they become like the most rebellious. You feel like that was kind of a similar sentiment for you? Oh, no. Nah, because I wasn't, I grew up in church, but I wasn't a church kid. Like, it wasn't like my grandma or somebody in my family mm -hmm. was a pastor. Like, that's when it gets a little tricky because it's like, you have to really move a certain way. Like, my grandma. <laughs> you say you got to move a certain way. Yeah, like, 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 it's the streets. Like, you really got to nah, move a certain sure. way. for sure. For real. Like, if you if your dad's a pastor, like, you can't do certain stuff on the mm -hmm. surface. Like, low key. But like I said, I grew up in church, but it wasn't to that. Like, I'm very... I'm a Christian and I'm I'm rooted into church, but it wasn't mm -hmm. to that. You know what I'm saying? So like, I just didn't see myself singing gospel because it wasn't to that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't that deep into church to be singing gospel music. It's because I like singing. I'm not going to sing a gospel song just because I can sing. You feel me? Like, like I need to be more rooted, more into church, more before I started singing gospel professionally, at least. Mm. So who? So being rooted into R and B, like who were kind of like who are kind of like at the beginning of those roots. Like, Marvin Gaye, Al Green. When I was um, younger, my mom didn't put on the rap station. She only put on the old school station. And it's mostly R and B, old school R and B. Mm. So I'm listening to uh, uh, Marvin Gaye, Al Green, Old Usher, Old Tank. Like that's what I'm really raised on. For real. So you didn't even get like what what would what was that modern day R and B? Like you didn't even get that from the hip hop stations. You was just straight oldies and then straight oldies with like a little sprinkle of like usher and yeah know, like in there. i was still listening to rap i was still but my mom we in the car she's not putting on hip-hop station for sure she's putting on the oldies mm. every trip mm. so kind of going based off that like how do you develop like the image that you have now like because right now i feel like men in r&b are in an interesting space because now it kind of is becoming more um it's becoming more open to being able to be vulnerable in the music right. you know i think someone has said it best to me before like R and B male R and B singers aren't singing in the rain, begging for a girl back right. anymore. It's more like more open. Where you know you you get to be more open about the things that you went through, your personal struggles, but also kind of like in certain for certain R and B singers, like they can even express like a certain level of toxicity in their music too. Like there's more. It's more of a wide genre now for men in R and B. For sure, I appreciate it. I'm glad that it's like that. Like, cause to be honest with you. 
Nobody wants to see anybody in the rain singing anymore. <laughs> like they could say that all they want to. No, if I put up, if I go on Twitter right now with a video of me with my shirt off singing in the rain, any girl that ever was a fan of Zay France is gonna be like, "What are you doing?" One hundred percent. No, but can you really think about like somebody in like twenty twenty three like putting out a video of them singing in the rain with their shirt off? There's like, people trying it, and it's not getting attention. Yes, I be seeing R and B dudes all the time trying to pull that. I because have they, that. You gotta show me because that shit is crazy. Listen. I don't just, I just don't, I'm not knocking it, but it's just not my style. Like, I just, no, no, I'm not knocking it either. I'm just like, it's 2023. I don't think that. But that's know, what people correlate with R&B. True. Heartache, begging, crying in the rain, arms open, and like, it doesn't have to be that to be R&B. It's to me, me, baby. It's me. To come yeah, back. Yeah, like, I still, if you listen to my music, I still make love songs. I still show a woman that, I still show that woman, the, a woman matters, and that's the most important to me, like, mm-hmm. to respect the woman, you feel me? But, like, I talk my shit, too, which is real. Like, what I'm saying, you feel me? Like, it's not all <clears throat> flowers and candies and love with R&B and life, period. So I'm not going to make every song like that. Like, that makes no sense to me. Right. And I feel like a lot of the R&B songs back in the day wasn't always like that. They just wasn't as, I guess you could say, vulgar, or they wasn't, they kind of, like, was How more finessing with it. Like, they finessed mm-hmm. it better, you feel me? Like... If it was some sex shit, they not saying straight up, let's fuck. They saying something way more smooth, you feel me? Which I could respect, and I'm trying to get into that. Like, I want to be able to be metaphorical with it, you feel me? So it's not just straight up saying how what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But sometimes that's what you're going to get, because that's what I'm feeling. Right. So. What do you feel like it was, like, the turning point for them, like, R&B to kind of be more, uh, vo- well, I guess vulgar, but also more open to, like, having, being able to do more than just singing Rappers the thinking they could sing. Mm. They like that because now they're singing, but singing rap shit. That's true. Now you got rappers think. I mean, singers like I could really sing. Let me say some shit like that too, real quick. It's gonna sound way harder, right? Or you think like um, but kind of like I guess like Drake and I guess Kanye on 808s, and I'm trying to think who else that I could say kind of was like a turning point for that. But obviously Drake, I think is suspect like number one in, in terms of like kind of being able to talk about other shit. And being melodic and just sounding good. Right. And being more, I, would, I don't know if you say vulgar for Drake, but definitely being more forward. With yeah, like right. The, the intentions That's of, what I mean, forward. Forward with the intentions of the sound and r Exactly. But I like that because then it kind of gives like a new life to like, you know, it gives a new life to the genre too because then people like yourself are able to like dive more and it inspires you to do, okay, I could, you know, I could do this, but I could also obviously respect the women always and do those love songs because women are the key to everything in this music right. shit, but I'm still talking about shit for men to relate to as well too. My thing is R&B to me is about, it's, it's levels to R&B, it's structure, mm. like the structure of this, how the song is made, harmonies, backgrounds. You could be talking about anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to be about love. It doesn't, you could be talking about anything as long as it has the structure of harmonies. It has... A good lead, you feel me? But it's still the way a song is structured is the way it's, it's R and B to me. It's not about the topic that makes an R and B. It's how it sounds and the feeling it gives you. Because you, know you could be talking about any, you could be talking about chicken, and it could be an R and B song, bro. But just because you're singing about love, or like it's a lot of melodic rappers that are getting in the genre, that are in the genre. If you look on their songs. It'll say R and B at the end, but it's yeah. really just melodic rap. So it's kind of tricky now because there's no like clear difference. Like a lot of people don't know. There's, there's some teenagers that never grew up on Usher that don't really know who Usher is, and they think that Dirk is an R and B singer. <laughs> like that, that, not that he's an R and B singer, but that he has R and B songs. Right. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. None of them are R and B songs. It's because he's melodic singing rap. on it. Yeah, yeah, he's melodically he's melodic rapping. You feel me? Hmm. Like there's a lot of artists that aren't R and B artists that are in the genre because they're singing. Like, I would say, like, a boogie kind of, like... For sure. He's not a singer. Yeah. He could hold a note and he could sing, but he's not a singer. He's not singing. Yeah, he's a rapper. Right. First and foremost. Sure. But he could sing, though. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he's an R&B singer. And that doesn't mean it's an R&B song just because he's singing. <laughs> Which is probably, like, also why I feel like, you know, people... I forget, who was the one who said that R&B? Oh, well, it was Puff. Puff was like, R&B isn't... De- or did he say R&B was dead? I don't remember. But I feel like that R and B is dead conversation came back around like a year ago, and I thought that was a stupid conversation because it's just like never entertained. It never ended. It never ended to begin with. And if people were like kind of just only looking at the rappers as like the source of their R and B fix, they're kind of they're tweaking. Yeah, I never entertained that conversation. I'm not gonna lie, that's not. Entertained. It's a lot of R and B. 
A lot of R&B. And it's still moving. True. Like, I mean, you look at someone like SZA, her shit dropped. Yeah, the went, women are killing it. Yeah, it's the, it's the men. Platinum. It's the men that we got to step it up. That's what I'm trying to do. You feel me? That's what I'm trying to make the sound as big as it possibly can be because the women are killing it. Like, R&B is very much alive. It's a lot of R&B artists, especially women. Right, and you are killing it because Def Jam, congratulations. Appreciate you know what I'm saying? Um, how long has this been, like, official? A couple months. A couple months. But we just can, like, talk about it, like, now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, first of all, congrats. Appreciate you. know you. what I'm saying? Great way to start off 2023. So. Um, how did Def Jam come around? Um, Very much organic. The person assigned me found me on Twitter. That's said crazy. that he needs to do a meeting with me. I was like, let's do it. And we met. Said everything right, got the paperwork <laughs> right. You know I'm here. That easy. And he believes in me though. Mm -hmm. Like for somebody that high up to believe in me the way he believes in me, and just was like straight up like, what are we doing? Right. Like let's get it. I was like, yeah. He believes. I believe. Let's get it. I love that for you, and I love that you're also at, like the same label as Friday too. Cause sure. like I didn't even piece that together until literally as you're saying, that, I'm like, wait a second, because Friday was just here with me like I think like two weeks ago, but like. I'm thinking about that. I'm like, oh shit! Like he's at the same. They're on the. They're both on Def Jam, which I think is tight because obviously y'all being friends and knowing each other for an extended period of time. Facts, like, we knew each other before both of us were signed. Right, I'm about it. That's what I'm about to say. Like it was funny because Friday and I were just talking about when he was here, um, the video of him recording God did in his mom's crib. I think mm -hmm. he said it. I don't want to miss. Sorry, Friday, if I if I said that wrong. But he he we were talking about how like he recorded in his mom's crib, and I love. And again, like you talking about you thugging it out on the U-Haul, I like seeing shit like that. Sure. Cause that's the shit that kind of inspires you. Like, damn, sure. bro, you was thugging it out in the U-Haul or thugging it out in, in your mom's bedroom with the my, one mic and shit like that. For and sure. then now it's like, oh, now you Lit. you signed and you and you doing what you're supposed to be doing. That is good for sure. How did you two first connect to each other? Like, um, way back when, or how long ago? My boy Mizzy. Oh, Mizzy. So my boy Mizzy is like, he's a writer, producer, songwriter, right? Mm -hmm. So before I really became established. And people started knowing who I was. I would just go to every session with him because he was a writer. So I would just go to the sessions. If I wanted to write, I would write. If not, I'm just basically just meeting people through him. Mm. And we went to a writing um, session with Friday one time. And we didn't even record. We was just playing each other um, records. I think we actually did record. I think we did like a hook or something. Okay. But we just we were just cooling. And me and him got in contact since then. But Mizzy, bro, he's the glue to everything. Like, bro, my communication is so true. I'm getting better at it now. But like... I'm just trash, bro. Like, mm -hmm. so now I'm actually working on it. But a lot of relationships I built was through Mizzy. Shout out Mizzy, man. Blue, for sure. Shout out Mizzy. How was touring the UK? Say again? How was touring the UK? Lit. That shit was a blur, bro. That shit happened really <laughs> quick. I was not ready, and I'm ready to go back. What I'm do you ready. mean you weren't ready? Bro, I only performed like three or four times before I'm on stage mm -hmm. in front of 20,000 <clears> people with Neo. Like... I went on tour with Neo. I didn't go to UK by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Obviously, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I was gonna get to the Neo part, but you know, yeah, I was trying to. So it's like that's why I wasn't ready to personally. I just felt like I never, I didn't kill a show. Like I'd be feel like I'm killing shows now. But before I was just like in my head too much. He just told me like I asked him, the last, the our last show was London, and I was like, yo, what do you think I should do better? And he was like, bro, to me you're doing good. He was like, you just in your head. He was like, I don't owe you nothing. Like this isn't a favor. Like you're not here because I gave you like. This is a favor for you. Like, you're supposed to be here. Like, show up and show out every night. Like, show them that you're supposed to be here. Like, mm -hmm. okay. That helped. But it was the last show, so I only got to, <laughs> only got to use his advice. You got the shit off on the, yeah. last show, the last show only. <laughs> and I still didn't feel like I killed it. I ain't going to lie. Because I, um, I told myself, I was like, bro, you're not going to be a bitch. You're going to pull your phone out. We're in London. When you get done, you're going to pull your phone out, and you're going to tell them to take a picture with you or a video with you. Bro, I'm the whole time I'm performing. I'm like, yo. You think about the phone? <laughs> think about my phone. Like, bro, I am not pulling my phone out, bro. And I look over and I could just see my my manager, my uh, manager Black, looking at me like, like nigga, like pull your phone out. I just pull my phone out. <laughs> I'm sitting there, my voice is all crackly and shit. I'm like, yo, London, <laughs> say what up. Like, but that was a good ass experience though. I had fun. I ain't gonna lie, that shit was lit. You gotta take like a shot or something before you go on stage. I can't, bro. I'm too. I be too in my head. I'm not. I can't do none of that before. I, Real? Nah. I understand smoking, like, cause I'm that way too. But like, a shot? Nah. Right. I'm not a drinker. I'm a smoker. So you'll catch oh. me smoking a blunt before before you tell me catching a shot. I ain't gonna lie. Cause now I'm a little sweaty and shit. Now I'm, yeah, I'm straight. <laughs> I got a segment in my show where 
I give shots out, and I'm supposed to take a shot, and bro, I almost threw up last time I did it. No, what? Yeah. London? No, nah, oh, this... it was in America. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I gave a shot out, and I gave myself a shot, and it was a little bit too much. Don't got no chaser. I'm a chaser nigga, too. Like, I need a chaser right after. Mm. No chaser. Going right back to the song, I'm like, yeah, mouth like... watering. I'm like, nah. Yeah, look at the crowd this. like, yo, I might not make it. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it's a little small. Like, the venues are smaller, so I can't just, it's no nothing to, I got to Figure it out. You can't right. run nowhere. Yeah, there's nowhere to You run. can't run like behind the stage. Yeah, nah. maybe spit yeah, it out. Nah, like... that's not the I had to do it. <laughs> you dug out the shot. Yeah. What was it a shot of? Casamigos. Ah, oh, damn. Reposado. Not the Casamigos doing you dirty. Dirty. Nah, dirty but true. like, you know what it is? You probably all like, you in a blur on stage too. So when you take the shot, you're not even thinking about like, I'm not quick thinking. pour and down. Like, you probably. Bro, I'm thinking that. it's water. I'm pouring a shot like it's water. <laughs> Like, I'm tweaking. <laughs> no more shots for you then. Nah. Because then it's like, you're just going to, mm -mm, no. Nope. Nah, I can't think. I can't perform the way I'm supposed to perform. I'm thinking yeah. about not throwing up. Yeah, it's a lot. I wish you asked Neil that question on like after the first show, though. I didn't want to. Because I, I was thinking, like, let me try to get better before I ask him. Mm. But it didn't happen. <laughs> I was getting scared. Every crowd was bigger. Every every show, I'm like, fuck, bro. After the second show, I feel like I would have been like, uh, okay, so I did the same thing the last one. Let me see. <laughs> I did the same thing the last one and the last one and the last one. Yeah. And you just didn't want to ask until I'm ready to go back to London right now. I'll turn London up right now. I'll turn the whole UK up right now. Then you got to right turn now. on your shoulder about this, huh? For sure. What? Bro, I, I did my song. We have a song together, Laying Low. Mm -hmm. And then I did another one of my original songs, um, Comfort Zone. Mm -hmm. Before I left, I had like 1.8 million streams. When I got back, I had like almost 7 million. So Damn. it correlated. People was fucking with the music. But like, I probably looked goofy up there because I didn't get that many followers. So in my head, I'm like, I got to work on my shit, bro. People fucking with the music like this. It's a banger. like. But I'm not him up there yet. Mm. So I got to become him up there because it would have correlated. I'm in front of 20,000 people almost every day. I should have at least 5,000 followers from this from this tour. You didn't get 5,000 followers from the tour? I got like 2,500, bro. That's so good. It was good. It's good. But like, if I would have really showed my ass... It went crazy. Hey, look, you got like, how many streams you said you had when you left? Like what? almost 7 million. Versus like what? 1 mil before? 1.8. Not bad. For what? How many shows? Like, said? 8, I think. 8, eight or 9. Great shows. That's not bad. Facts. I ain't gonna lie. For like a week time in the UK, Facts. and then you come back and you got, you up 5.8 mil? Yeah. Wait, that it correlated. Right? Oh, 5.2 no. mil? 5.2 mil? You up 5.2 mil? Fuck it. That's hard. Yeah, facts. That's a lot of people streaming in a week, sure. too. So where do you go from here? So we got a project on the way. I know we don't got a date for it, but you're working on it. Mm-hmm. My next single, um, the one I performed, Give It Up. Tight. I'm working on um, making Zay France the brand a thing. Mm -hmm. People know who I am more. And just pumping these singles out. So when I drop this project, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Def Jam is a legendary label. I refuse to drop a project and people not know who I am. <laughs> and not you, real shit. Like, so it's my I job. get it. No, I get it. It's my job to put this footwork in and just show motherfuckers that I'm I'm here. So we got some good R and B to look forward to. So you here, you him, you, you dig. You won't get it crazy. Well, look, man, I appreciate you being here. Um sure. project on the way. Um his name's Zay Francis. He wants everybody to know who he is, so make sure you fuck with him, right? Um, before we get up out of here, anything else you want to let the fans know, uh, where they can follow you at, all that good stuff. Now it's the time to do it. This camera right here. Zay France on all platforms. If you love R&B, I suggest you follow me. Got a lot of big things coming up. Singles, shows, features. Um, yeah, fuck with me. I'm going to fuck with you back, for sure. On the radar, I appreciate y'all having me. My God, appreciate you. Real shit. Um, you heard him. Go run up that performance out now. Make sure you go follow him. Uh, please follow him. You know what I'm saying? We want to get his followers all the way up. Make up for that, uh, for the European shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Facts. You know what I'm saying? He's him. Facts. All right? If you see him drinking on stage, back up. Yeah. You feel me? And don't judge. And don't judge. And don't judge. But make sure you keep streaming the music because that shit is fire. Go so, follow him. Go show him some love. Go show him some support. Love is street. Support is street. But y'all already knew that. Till next time. Zay France on the radar. We out. Boom. My God. Shit, you Money. 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 Money